I, most people want more muscle than I can give them in a year, which means they have to be an ex, ex, I mean, truthfully, an extreme excess. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 49 of It's Just Bodybuilding. I'm your host, Big Ron Partlow, and of course, with me, IPB Pro Dusty Hanshaw. On today's episode, we have got a shit ton of Instagram questions. We're going to shoot the shit on It's Just Bodybuilding. There you go. It's a good word, boss. I'm doing really well. Yeah? Doing really well. Got a fresh week ahead of us. Wow. It's Wednesday to everybody who's watching. But, uh, you know, so far the week's been awesome. By Wednesday, I know that's what I'm going to say. So I feel good about that. Yeah, Plus, yeah. by then, you might have had some closure on what we've been talking about, your secret mission. I have a couple secret missions, Dusty. Well, I only know the one. Yeah. I, I, I still keep wrestling in my mind exactly how I'm going to handle this. Well, it's a big decision for you. It's I would have already done it me. twice. I mean, <laughs> I don't I don't really spend money. Yeah, so. I, trust me, I was thrown off. I, I actually was at my mother's house and I like I was like shh, 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 shh. Ron needs me. Yes. He's about to make a bad choice. He made the right call. <laughs> so so this is this is so perfect that people see this in re, this is reality. When yes. I'm about to do something that I know has a possibility of massive regret. <laughs> you text me first. <laughs> That's the guy who gets the text. So the what text, should I do? It's like so, he's already made his decision. <laughs> so what's the text? Uh, this is the text I sent Dusty the other day. No, there is no preamble, no context whatsoever. Just random text in the middle of the day. So I need your advice. Finance or lease? <laughs> I loved it. I was like, wait, that means this car is relatively, well, either new or relatively new. Very new. Which yeah, side yeah. Close with. to being new. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's a text he got. And he, uh, like true Dusty, uh, the friend he is, he uh, responded very promptly with. <laughs> yeah, if it was like a work thing, I might let it go an hour or two. But this was real business. I was like, he needs to know. In my brain, you were sitting at the dealership, and I was like, oh. he needs me. He needs me. Hey, see, you know, you would be one of my emergency people if I was on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. There you go, especially with so, something like this. You wouldn't be the smartest one on the list. Not even close. Because <laughs> <laughs> everyone your brother on the, you is know, a doctor of some obscene... <laughs> Yeah, I'd probably throw my brother on there. Infectious disease. I don't think it's going right. I'm not with him. It'd be good to have like, yeah, you got to cover your bases. I think you're allowed three people on that list. Isn't that yeah, true? Well, yeah. Well, you, no, you, you can have, but you've got the you've got the fifty fifty, the poll the audience, and you got the call. But you can call anybody you want. Oh yeah. So you'd have an arrangement of people in your but head. You would know you, in your head, like yeah. you know, if it yeah. was something like educated, you'd call your brother, or your dad. You know, something involving something, uh, something involving more Las more Vegas flexi- and problems and moral flexibility. He's like, I got, I know who to call. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Regis, who is that just died, by the way. Yeah, yeah, you know, Brutal. but he would have known to call me too. <clears throat> you know, I think Regis Philbin holds a record for the most appearances on David Letterman. Is that true? I think so. <laughs> Somebody check this. This needs to be live so someone can text me and be like, "Fuck." No, he's right I just in. have a feeling because I remember Dave saying that Regis was his most frequent guest at one point, and I know Regis was just down the hall. So whenever Dave had cancellation last minute, or someone missed a flight, he got the just, call. They could just grab Regis from down the hall. So half the time he was on Letterman, it was like, "Fuck," someone didn't show up. <laughs> what are you doing right now? <laughs> yeah, but him and Dave were good friends, right? So, anyways, that's the shit I know. You know, you know, someone someone wrote the best comments on the on the post last week. They said, uh, "I know what you guys should do. You should open a pawn shop <laughs> because you know a bunch of stupid shit, and Dusty can wheel and deal." It would work, 
goes, you guys would be like a crazy team. They go bringing something in. I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck this is. Ron, what is this? Oh, that's a 1963 <laughs> Fender Mustang. <laughs> how, how would you not know that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. You, not everyone knows this shit? Holy man. And you can take the guy for everything he's worth. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. for like sure. For 10 bucks. I'd like to get it and his money. I want both. <laughs> he's going to pay me to leave it with us. That's how this is fucking going. I feel like a failure if I actually have to give money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd be in business with the right guy. So you got a bunch of questions, dude? I do, and I've got some solid ones. And I actually, I pretty much did like a virtual pinky promise that I would that we would cover one of them, which okay. is like a contract, as far as yeah, I'm yeah, concerned, yeah. you know, for sure. So we'll leave that one for the end if we have time for it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, so uh, so I want to cover this one. Actually, it's it's. It's solid. So the guy is just getting into coaching. Okay. And he wants to know when you were starting, when I was starting, how did you deal with clients who were shitty clients, meaning maybe cheating on their diet, maybe, you know, not doing what they're supposed to do? Because his concern is this. He needs the money, but they're also business cards. And so if they're not doing what he says, he doesn't look good. Well, Here's my take on that. I I know that for like, it's not the same for everybody. Some people competing means something different. It doesn't really delegitimize it for them. I don't know. I, I, I mean, obviously there's just depends on the client. Like if you have someone who says they want to win. Right. And then that's them saying they want to win. So now you are like, well, yeah, you, you have a different standard. But if, you know, someone's like, I don't know, d- some people come from a different place to, to do the show. And I'd always just tried to help everyone as much as I could. Mm-hmm. And I never yelled at anybody or tried to make them cry for cheating on their diet. I would always just be like, you know, this isn't going to be helpful. Right. But very calm. And just try to guide them as best I could. Um, there is a point, obviously, that we have to say, hey, like, I can't help you. Right. But I never really worried about a client not looking their best because I think it's a little bit, I don't know, I, I didn't really care about the marketing part. I was trying to help people. Right. To be honest. <clears throat> not like, I didn't really give a fuck. Like, if, like, I had shows where I had three people and all three of them were, like, third call out. Right. But that's because I take people who want to work hard and maybe their genetics are terrible. Right. But you just help them best you can. I had a guy, I had a guy get last place one time, but he won the most shredded award. So, so there was a, there was a victory in there as well. Yeah. Like some people just aren't made for this, but you, you have to try to guide them and just do your best to help them. Like they're hiring you, you work for them. Like, right. That's how I looked. I never worried if they like if someone didn't look their best and I and they knew it was because, you know, they're cheating on their diet and stuff. I never like worried about that making me look bad. Right. No, I get you. I think the only thing I would add to that, because he didn't specify, is if I suspect a client is possibly cheating, uh, I ask them. Right. And then <clears throat> once they tell me, I say, hey, I'm not going to beat your ass over this, but it helps me if I know. Right. Because I do, I can't make adjustments if you're not following the diet. And <laughs> if I make adjustments based off of your cheat and how it affected you, I might be making an adjustment we don't need. Um, but other than that, I, I'm 100% with you. It's like you, you, you take who you who you have with clients. And I think overall, the other thing is, is when you're thinking that big picture of building up your following or your, your name, that's going to happen. It's going to come. Mm-hmm. You know, I've had I, what's funny to me is. My clients who have been the ones who've cheated and, and kind of been my problem children are usually my best athletes. So yeah, yeah. they're the guys that are oftentimes winning. And at the end of the show, I'm kind of like, and imagine if, if you could put it together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I've found that uh, those who get into the sport that just are hungry for it, but they know they don't really lock into it, they're usually – pretty fucking crazy, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, cause they know it's like, okay, day one, we're on an uphill battle here. I'm, yeah. I, I look like a pear and I have no muscle. Let's fucking do a bodybuilding show. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. But you, you know what I mean about like, 
having a client and they don't place well, but they're still really happy with like everything and oh yeah, all that stuff. Like, and and you don't worry. Like, it never crosses my mind. Like, oh, I didn't have the most ripped guy in this show. Like, it doesn't. Right. I don't, it's not about that. You know, it's um. You know, there's people who have the ability to smash shows. Right. And there's some people that probably will never smash a show, but yeah. you know. Well, it's still a great they're, they're improving or, or, or whatever yeah. over time. I mean, yeah, yeah. And, it's, and it's if you have fun with it, I think, too. What else? You, it's your turn. It's your turn. I like this whole back and forth deal. <laughs> OK, so this whole uh, <clears throat> battle between uh, Fuad and Greg. <laughs> I, I, I'm glad that I learned of this. Of, uh, wow. Yeah, you know what? I, I'm, I'm so out of the thing. fucking loop. Like, I, I don't have time to watch all the other stuff, right? Yeah. And so if I have time to watch anything, I'll sometimes put on Fuad's show. Right. Uh, like, but, you know, I listen to Joe Rogan and I listen to some other stuff that's completely unrelated to bodybuilding. Right. So um, so I just happened to catch, because Fuad did kind of some some uh, rebuttal, uh, <laughs> you know, videos and stuff. So I kind of caught it. So, um. The question is, uh, you know, due to this, you know, what are your thoughts on building muscle in a deficit? Uh, <laughs> I mean, for, for me, it's it's pretty simple. Um, my, my biggest thing is our goal is to get muscle as quickly as possible. OK, um, if you want to put on five pounds over five years, I'm not going to argue that it's impossible especially when you're bringing in drugs and everything else into the mix. Um, Cycling in like high carb days. and Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to find a way in your training. You're getting stronger. You're going to put on some muscle. But if you're like every single person who's listening to this show that wants to put on muscle, I, most people want more muscle than I can give them in a year, which means they have to be an extreme, I mean, truthfully, an extreme excess. You know, I mean, I say extreme, but I mean, yeah, deficit doesn't, the answer is no. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, because what you're asking for is how, how to put on muscle mass. If you're asking if you're going to put on some, sure. Are you going to see it? No. Right. You know, and I just don't think this is, pay, patience is one thing, but choosing the slowest route is stupid. You know, I mean, there's a reason, like, Here's the way I look at it, too, is look at what has built the biggest bodybuilders on the planet. Look what's built the biggest people on the planet. Look at Dorian, Ronnie, Jay, and their offseason. Do they look like they're hanging out in a deficit trying to put on muscle mass? Or do they look like they're before they really peaked? They look like they were trying to put on as much as they could. Yeah. You know? And then oh, you look no. at the coaches. You know, I mean, I remember, uh, do you remember Fuad's first video, uh, like his actual training video that he put out? Um, I remember he <clears throat> he had qualified for the Olympia in Dallas, and Chad was like, "Put on weight as soon as possible, like <clears throat> eat." You know what I mean? Because he wanted both to get him up so he could diet back down for the Olympia, but also take advantage of every minute they had. Yeah, you know. So yeah. so yeah, it's pretty simple. What are your thoughts on it? Well, it's 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 um exactly what you just said you can put muscle on in a deficit the two times i guarantee you'll put muscle on in a deficit is the first time you prep for a show right <laughs> and then quite often if you're coming off uh being off drugs or just doing like a low cruise a real cruise yeah and then you start your prep and ramp up you're in a deficit but you're gonna grow for like like every prep that i started clean and small Yep. I would wind up like the same weight shredded on stage four months later. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. You know what and I mean? I, and, and that's, it's I like, think, where <clears throat> people so, get it yeah, twisted. Sure. You know what I mean? Because I yeah. do the same thing almost every prep. Chris yeah. will always say that I'm, I'm great at getting shredded and I suck at losing weight. Well, so here's the thing. Um, <clears throat> it, it, you, so you can definitely put muscle on in a deficit. But also, too, like how do you word that? How much of a deficit? Like mm -hmm. you have to be specific. Is a thousand calorie deficit? Well, maybe you can't put any muscle on a thousand calorie deficit. Yeah, Who knows? Natural. <laughs> Tiny amounts. Is it, are you in like hundred calorie? Like you know, what does that even mean? So you have to define all this shit. 
That's why I don't like these questions that much. But I understand what the the question is. Right. What's best? Yep. And so I I think that <clears throat> we're definitely on to something with how like w- what I like to do is I like to diet guys while they're on their cruise. Mhm. And then when they hit their blast, they eat their fucking face off. Right. So their body can how, use. It seems to work. And, yeah. you know, they, they, they lose weight on their cruise and sometimes they feel like they lose a lot of weight, but that, but that's fine that they, they have more muscle. You can just right. tell, you look at the photos and they have more muscle, even when they're like small and on their cruise and dieted down small, right. they have more muscle than they did before. And right. then the blast up and eat. So I like the cyclical treatment of it. I, I think that that makes sense. You know, you refresh mm-hmm. your body, you don't get too fat, right. you know? You don't, you know what I mean? There's all sorts of ways to do it, obviously. I'm just being general here. Well, and I think you got to also factor in, keep, everyone wants to make this a science experiment. I always like to dumb it down to my level, um, yeah. which is, okay, so if you're saying we're going to grow at a deficit, should we have an excess while we're trying to diet? That sounds a little ridiculous, doesn't it? Right, right, right. It's the yeah. same fucking thing. Yeah. Like, like just think. To gain, what do you need? To lose, what do you need? Now, what we're talking about? To lose as much as possible, to gain as much as possible. Right. You know, so yes, it can be done, but, you know, there's just no reason to do it that way. And I think uh, oftentimes when guys come out with shit like this, I haven't heard Greg's name in a while. Good, Good timing to start arguing that we should grow eating less. Right. Okay. Now, I mean, this is like the third or fourth time it's come up over the last month or so um, that his name's come up that I've been watching or hearing something, and and it's it's like, oh, you're back in the news. You know what I mean? And, and in our industry, I think that that's kind of a funny thing that you see is like every year there's the new guru, Patrick's the guy for 2020. You know what I mean? Like <clears throat> he's been a guru for forever. He's always been good at what he does. You right. know, but there's always the new one for whatever reason. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. I know what you mean. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good question, though. I think it's good that people are asking, but just think. So I'd say I'd say for the average dude, you got to eat, man. And I like the idea of having a period of time where you are dieting occasionally to, like, reset your body. And mm-hmm. we see how that how it's good for inflammation and it's good for all sorts of shit in the body to do like a mini cut, you know, as people are talking, um, I'm sure there's a million different formulas to use on how to stagger the weeks. The, the, <laughs> yeah. the whole, you know, like don't, don't, don't more noise. I don't really worry too much about. <laughs> yeah. 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 But generally you got to eat, you got to eat yeah. more than you, more than you're dieting for sure. All right. Here's a, this is a good one, uh, that I actually think is good. Uh, <clears throat> How do you guys maintain the condition you do while bulking? Um, and I'm going to add to this because I know what it means is I had a lot of people that have been messaging me after seeing like pictures of me while I'm trying to grow. And it's a different look than it was 10 years ago when I was trying to grow. Yeah, you're very lean. You know, so <clears throat> explain the difference there, Ron, and why, why that takes place. I, the, this guy's wondering about cycle diet, like the secrets, and I don't think that people understand why. It's heavy ass, hard fucking training that cements in dense, fibrous, permanent tissue that burns calories like a motherfucker and makes it harder to get fat. How's that? You just summarized everything that could possibly be said because I, I laugh about it because I used to be the opposite. <laughs> I would get so fat so fast, and I would like you know now I would I get teased because people will come around and they're like, if people knew like because I, I have a cheat meal every day. So that <laughs> that muscle that that muscle that they're referring to in the question mm-hmm. is the exact same reason why it'll be so hard for you to get small again. Yeah, <laughs> which is the ongoing, uh, right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say argument with Dante and I, even though it's not an argument, I, I just want to prove that I can do it. So I may kill myself yeah. on accident trying to lose muscle, but. It's funny, I like, I sort of did a little bit of an experiment last week. 
Tell me. And I threw in a couple extra cheat meals. Right. Like just I was like, ah, fuck, just throw them in and see what happens, you know? And I threw in like two or three extra huge meals last week. Didn't even move my weight. Like when I got when I got to Saturday morning, I was still down to 254. Right. In fact, I saw 253 on Friday. How did it, how does it did it look any different? When I when I was 253 on Friday, I, I looked flat. So I had like extra cheat meals, and by Friday, I still looked flat. And what was what is it? What is a cheat meal with these extra ones? Because you said big. I had like twelve ounces of steak with like two hundred and fifty grams of carbs from pasta. Okay. So like a big ass fucking bowl of pasta with a big tenderloin steak. Right. Nice. And then like three muffins. There we go. God. That's like one meal. Tear. So I threw that in a few times. <laughs> You're all, I like that one so much. We're going to try that shit again. <laughs> and it just like evaporated off my body. <laughs> right. Like it, all that did was made you more hungry. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. And then I kind of look exactly the same today, like as I did last Monday. Right. You know? <laughs> you're, like, you're like, well, that was disappointing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know <laughs> that it does add up. It does add up over time. Yeah, yeah had you done that every single week for a while, you'd start to see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, that's the shit people got to be careful with. It's like when someone says, yeah, I had a couple cu- cookies and didn't even notice. And they're like, mm-hmm. they start thinking, I can have a couple cookies every week during prep. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> There's actually a cookie <laughs> counter in your body <clears throat> that's going to know. <laughs> so but, is it my turn? It is. It's hard if, with it going back and forth to remember. If, if it, yeah, there's. I mean, between the two of us, it's so, <laughs> there's so many people. Um if you had the potential to be good and committed to another sport, what would it be and why? Well, I'd be – so if, can, I, can I lose my injury and go back to hockey? Because that's what I would do. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, done. Greatest sport on the planet. Boom. Love it. Not even a difficult thing. I mean, violence that's legal with some occasional goals. That's cool. Yeah. I'd like to actually, I mean, since we're in an imaginary world, I'd like to also push back and be in the 90s when the game was better than it is now because they've kind of fucked it up. But, or even the 80s. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we can go way back and Playing it without just a fucking kept helmet. better. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> remember, foiling remember, up before the games, you know? <laughs> it was funny because, uh, you know, being from Alberta, of course, I always watched the Oilers play like that was the, the team that everyone rooted for, right? And I remember growing up, there was Craig McTavish on the Oilers, and he played with no helmet. Yeah, he played all the and way through the end of his career with no helmet. Played, yeah, and, and it's because they grandfathered him in. He didn't have to lose it. Yeah, they had. They changed the helmet rule, and he was just like one of the guys that got grandfathered in because he was I – I can't remember the details, but there was like a, just a few guys that were allowed to play without a helmet. <laughs> it it's is funny. funny. Uh, and they're like – well, who's going to tell Craig? We're not going to tell Craig. Yeah, I just let him go. And then he played like played like for another 15 years. Dude, I couldn't even. I mean, I've taken like that's people don't realize like a the puck is frozen. Oh, fuck. Yeah. OK, by the time it's been out there for a little bit, that fucker's frozen. I've I, taken like off of a stick and just straight up. That thing will fuck you up. Like, I, I don't, don't want care. one off the dome. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says. I'm a prairie boy from Canada. So I grew up immersed in hockey, even though I never really played just pond hockey, you know, but I didn't play organized hockey, but I grew up immersed in it. The toughest motherfuckers were those 70s, 60s and 70s players with their faces all scarred up. And those remember the goalies before they even used masks. (laughs) They had like they basically put like a napkin over their face. (laughs) Jesus. And then that first guy (laughs) for the first guy. I can't remember his name. He's a famous, famous player. He's in the Hall of Fame and all that. But he's the first guy to make a mask. Yeah. And um, to protect his face. And just like those guys were just like that was it's like those old football players from the black and white days where their helmets were just thin little leather pads, you know? I mean, you don't even like I don't think people understand like how many times completely accidentally a goalie gets hit in the head with a puck. Oh, yeah. Like many times a game. Uh, and those dudes were taking those fuckers in the head. Yeah, I know. Uh, you know, I'm sure they had great insurance back then. <laughs> I think they were making like fifty bucks a game back then. <laughs> but you didn't answer yet, so don't be don't be jiving oh, out here. You know, I honestly, um, I would have loved to uh, if I never 
like I, I, I had dreams of being a, a BMX freestyle pro. Like, you know, that's why I still love BMX, right? I still follow all the pages and stuff like I've, I've mentioned. By the way, you look like a mid-80s freestyle bike today. Thank you. With the pink and white. That's very yeah. Miami Vice era. <laughs> I should have worn a white jacket. Though. Yeah, really yeah, yeah. It together, Don Johnson style. Yeah. So, 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 yeah. I mean, I always loved uh, those riders. You know, watching the X Games guys and all that. That would have been, that would have been incredible to be a, a BMX pro. I would have loved blown to. Blown away with what they do now. Oh yeah. I mean, well, those mega ramp, all the mega ramp shit. And and the Flatlanders now are just beyond comprehension, unbelievable. Like yeah. the stuff they do, like you know, I just think uh, it's it's come a long ways. But it's funny because uh, Flatland just got like like Flatland gets no attention, right? Right. It got like because ESPN wasn't really interested because there's no element of danger to the viewer, right? Like. Even though guys like break collarbones right in Flatland all yeah, the time. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, think about this for a minute. Right. It's it's to them, it, to the viewer. They're not 100 feet in the air. So. It doesn't translate to television, right? So they never really promoted it. So the ramp guys were like the ones that were making the big bucks. Right. Yeah, I, uh, I, I still, between, I follow BMX stuff and I follow skateboarding now. Because I yeah, used to well, skate Tony as a Hawk, kid. I skaters, yeah. But seeing what these kids do, just flat, I'm like... I watch a clip like six times. I'm like, how the fuck? I'm like, got my phone upside down. The, the thing about <laughs> skateboarders and the street riders, like the street BMX riders, mm-hmm. uh, those guys are, and the skaters are fucking crazy. The stairs they shoot off of with no helmets. Yeah. Fucking nothing. No shirt. <clears throat> I love it too. There's, this, there's like kids. They're like 11. Oh, this kid's 11. You go to his page. He's, he's got 600,000 followers and, and he's, he's sponsored by 37 companies. And you're like, and he's doing like life threatening moves. Oh, for sure. The one, there's know. one kid I wish I could remember his name. He's, uh, but his dad does all the filming and actually obviously runs the page. Yeah, and stuff. yeah, yeah. But it's so sick because the dad That's is like, the dad for monetizing his child so, yeah, so soon. Exactly. Smart. Use that little fucker. You brought him into this world. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. <clears throat> Yeah, okay, that a, that's a, that's a good question. I like that one. Your your, your turn. Ah, da, 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 da. <clears throat> let's see. I don't know that one. Ah, this is one just for you. How'd you fix your hip? I have some problem. Example: I hack. The foot and hip are not equal. I don't know what that means. I think they mean like one of their hips is coming off forward or something. Coming okay. forward or something. What'd you do? Um, well, I think that maybe one glute's stronger than the other. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's got a weak glute or something's not firing or what did, but what did you do? Uh, well, he specifically said, what did you, how'd you fix your hip? Well, I mean, I'm not sure exactly which hip injury he's talking about. Cause I've had a couple, but I know maybe he's talking about how the, the, the quad <laughs> fucked up my hip is kind of what I think he's talking about. Yeah, because weren't we just talking recently yeah. and you were talking oh, about how you're... Crooked. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, okay. That's what I'm thinking too. Uh, you got to make <laughs> sure you're doing a single leg compound movement every single time you train legs so that you can really focus on that side and keeping your form and firing everything. And uh, and and then you can really gauge your progress on how that that's going. You know what I mean? If mm-hmm. you don't do single leg compound movements, like maybe it's lunges, maybe it's single leg press, maybe it's whatever... Bulgarians, um, you got to do, yeah, you got to do something unilateral so that you can, you know, bring the strength together between the two sides and, and, uh, and be very aware of what's going on. So that's be, that'd be where I'd start. Did you, uh, did you go to a PT or anything to see if there was any muscles asleep or? Mm. No, I didn't do any physio. Um, but I, well, I did talk to one of the trainers at the gym. Uh, one of the trainers are Tyler. He's he's like an athletic specialist, you know. He yeah, deals with a lot so. of baseball players. Yeah, yeah. So he's got all like the stabilizer exercises, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, and he showed me some stuff for that glute and for um, that side of my lower back to like you know make me more rigid on that side. Right. And uh, yeah, I think that stuff helped. But yeah, it was just like you know, pretty simple exercises that you can just look up. Because that was the one thing I would say is if you're unsure. If you've got 
don't just go to a random PT because it's like a chiropractor or anything else. Half of them suck. But yeah. uh, if you have a good PT that you know of, go see them. Um, the guy that I see all the time now, I mean, I had that before where I went in and I was like, man, I'm, I just, I, I feel like I'm pushing more off the right leg and I was trying to figure out why. And it was because actually the right glute was off. Right. It w- wasn't firing. Yeah. So I couldn't pull at the depth of a squat from the glute at all. So my quad was literally trying to do all the work yeah. and it was actually imbalanced, which of course, beyond the fact that it wasn't good for training, that's an injury just waiting. You know? Oh what I mean? yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I didn't have any pain like from, I didn't know it was hip or anything like that, but I'm like, anytime, you know, you know how it is when you've been doing this as long as we have, like it's a blessing and a curse to be so in tune with your body. Yeah. Like when I do stiff legged deadlifts now, yeah. I consciously fire my left glute because if I don't think about it, sometimes it doesn't seem to, and I, and I feel myself shift and it gets real right. heavy. Right. <laughs> but if I just like, I, I get, you know, I stand up off the rack, flex my glutes, mm. and then I start the descent with them, like consciously flexed. And right. if I do that, it's like I just stay locked in the whole set. Right. It's just kind of funny. It's just turning on that nerve. Yeah, I think it's, that stuff is cool, the things that you can do. I know uh, <clears throat> when I was – I went and filmed with Brandon Allen uh, when he was going to do – he did a 900-pound squat in uh, sleeves. Yeah. And uh, he has a tendency where his body pulls to the right or left. I can't remember what it was, but it doesn't go down straight. So during his warm-ups, they use a, uh, a band around him and actually pull him the other way. Right. Just pull it tight while he squats as he's warming up with – 225, 315, 405. And then after three, four, five sets like that, they get rid of the band and his body's doing what it's supposed to do. Crazy. You know, it's a, it's a, Crazy. you're just resetting so the body knows what to do. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm sitting there watching, I'm like, what the fuck is going on right now? <laughs> so this is how we prepare for 900 pounds. We have someone fuck with us while we're doing our, our warm ups. <laughs> mm-hmm. I could use that. Okay. Is it my turn? It is. A lot of bodybuilders, a lot of young bodybuilders look old. You two have managed to keep younger faces. Why and how? I love this guy. So do I. I've been tearing up here because he's lying to my face IDFA Danny. (laughs) Oh, I know who it is. So, yeah, there we go. I'll send you 20. Um, (laughs) uh, You know what is funny is, I mean – I don't know the answer because I've actually always looked old. Like I was gambling in Vegas when I was 17 years old. Um, so I think part of my, I mean, I'm not even actually kidding, like is I've kind of always looked older. So I kind of stayed the same. Um, and then truthfully, it's because at my age now, I, I jam shit in my face and get Botox and all sorts of wacky stuff. I live in Scottsdale. <laughs> I wear pink. The fuck are we going to do? <laughs> right, right. Pink and white. Exactly. Yeah, but I mean, go. come on. Look at look how strong the mutant logo is, though. Oh, no, I love it. I mean, bam. No, that's you know? perfect for where you live. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's tropical. But yeah, so that's my excuse. Is I, I, go, I go to Glow Med Spa and he stabs me in the face. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I, just, uh, I just think that staying stress-free is the key. That's... And just trying to not let shit bother you and... Take time to just let yourself just chill for a minute every day and not worry about shit. I think that's part of it. And then I also just use a good face cream with a little bit of sunblock in it if I'm going to be out. Look at that. I'm a little, I'm having a moment right now. That's so Scottsdale of you. I'm like, look at you. No, my girlfriend gave me a formula. She's like, put this on your face every day. And then before you go to bed, put this on your face. I'm like, okay. And you did it. Well, it's a minor thing. Like, thanks. I'll do it. Sure. That's see. I've like committed to buying things before. I never actually used them. Like I bought like a oh you put this and this and then I put it on. No, it's just a it, face cream. It's just and it like cream. it burned and I was like I'm not doing oh, this. No. I stopped immediately. The, the fanciest thing I own, Dusty, is I have a beard oil made <clears throat> by a porn star. And did you buy it just because it was made by a porn star? Yeah, I might have. That's a it's a good but you know. She's making beard oil now. Fuck. <laughs> Fucking. You gotta support that hustle. Let's see. <laughs> How would you? Never mind. Never. You have experience with beards. Never. I mind. like the branding. I like the branding. I was like, I can get behind that. 
<laughs> so literally, you could have got behind that. Um, I will buy those Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> Let me ask you something You on the stress-free thing, because this actually happens to me. Have you ever had someone get irritated with you because you don't stress? I've actually had someone get mad at me. You never get worked up. You don't care about anything. And I'm like... You don't care about any anything. Yeah, you don't care about anything. I've heard that before. And and I'm, I'm like, like, oh, I totally do. But yeah. I just like... <laughs> I got to return some. <laughs> I got to return some client emails, and uh, you know. Yeah, I always find that funny because I've had that multiple times where people are actually heated, and I'm like, "It's you're mad at me because I'm not angry." <laughs> like, I know what you mean. Confused. What do you What do you want me? Should I do something? I can throw something. <laughs> it makes you feel better. <laughs> yeah, ge- generally, generally, I don't get like I'm I'm really chill, but I've also learned to be more chill. Like when I was younger, I had like some moments where I fucking flew off the handle. Like when you're younger, right? (laughs) Always, always quite deservingly. So did you, did you see, I put up a post like maybe a month ago. It said, uh, anything, something happens in my life. There's an immediate argument between the old me and the me I'm trying to be on what we should do to handle this. Yeah. (laughs) And I have that all the time. I'm like, Nope, I can't do that. (laughs) Uh, go back over here real quick go back over here all right let me see here uh i don't that one's boring oh this is a good one uh i'm seeing wow this is smart type it i'm really impressed by this so because you you only get so many letters in the box so he made like four words one word to shrink it right Genius. Anyways, <clears throat> seeing other competitors in my upcoming show that on IG that are looking better, how do I mentally handle that? Nothing you see is real. <laughs> so true. <laughs> so don't even worry about it because it doesn't fucking matter. Because I remember competing on, the, you know, I was wrapping up my career while Instagram was dawning, you know. Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking everyone looked like Mr. Fucking Olympia on Instagram. Yep. And then I would be like in the top call out second or first every fucking time anyways. And yeah. I'd, I'd be looking at some of these guys going, holy shit, I got to get on the treadmill. But then I'd go, wait a minute, that's pictures probably filtered. Right. And then come show day, that guy's like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does, you're, you're actually back. The other thing is too. And they fool themselves. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. When you fuck with your pictures, you're lying to yourself. Yeah. Because now everything anybody says of you is based on something that isn't real. It's not reality. Right. So it shifts your reality. I don't care what anybody says, even if you know. It's like yeah. setting your alarm at ahead 10 minutes so that you wake up 10 minutes earlier. You don't get out of bed. Can you fucking know it's 10 minutes earlier? Yeah, yeah. that would only work if someone did it to you. <laughs> like, like, you can't, it's just so stupid. Yeah, no, I think I think it's a mistake anyways because I also find um, in bodybuilding, I shouldn't say most because that's not true, but I found with myself and some people I know, that I never was very impressed with myself or saw what I, you know, cause you have a vision of what you want to be, not what you are yet. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. I, I hate <clears throat> most of my pictures. <laughs> I remember the first, uh, when I did the USA's the first time I'm backstage and I was just like, Holy fuck. These guys are big. You know what I mean? And, uh, so I, I got the first call out, which I was stoked about. And I come out, you know, from the back and Chris goes, when you walked out, you are so fucking big. And I'm like, I am? <laughs> like, you were thinking the whole time, like, they're so much bigger than you. And yeah. I never, Instagram has never been an issue for me. Because like you said, I know these people. Right. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Like, you, you know the ones that really look that way. And at the end of the day, the other thing that I always remind people is, there's no defense in bodybuilding. So if they're real and these guys are really better than you, then they're really going to beat you. Oh well. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, don't well. don't alter what you're doing 
Stick oh. to your plan, whatever your coach is saying, come in in shape and let things so, roll. I always had, because, you know, there's those times when you know you're not going to win. Mm-hmm. Like you're training to win, you think you're going to win. And then like you go to prejudging or whatever, or you go and you see, you look around, you're like, ah, oh, fuck. Like, I mean, you're just realistic. The odd, the odd time there's someone and you're like, ah, oh, shit. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm not winning my class. That's for sure. Right. But I am going to fucking beat every single guy can possibly beat yep i have to take down as many people as possible like if i don't do that it's like almost like that desperate like if you envision like a gang attacking you and they all have weapons yeah you know you're gonna die but you're gonna take out a few with you (laughs) but you're gonna try to blind a few guys or get a you're gonna try to kill at least a few yep right before they For get sure. you yeah exactly you're not gonna just lay down you're not so. just gonna lay down you're <laughs> just gonna go in fucking biting and fucking sticking thumbs and eyes and doing whatever you can do yep. and that's how that's how you go into the that's you should be your mentality day one of the show or yeah. day one of the prep right I, I think too i mean some i've told some of my clients who it's gotten in their heads before because I, they, it's hard for me to say don't be on social media and then also say, well, if you ever want to make a living, you need a following. Don't consume social media, which means post your shit up and then leave. You don't have to scroll. You don't got to mm-hmm. look. You don't got to follow <laughs> anybody. You know, you, can, you mm-hmm. don't have to literally. And I mean, g- go as far. OK, if you like following your girlfriend and your grandma and whatever – hide the people who do what you do yeah, so they just, don't pop up. I yeah. mean, literally, like, if, if it's in your head and it's fucking with you, it's hurting you, make it go away. You know, because that's, that's the key. I really think too many guys and girls are getting in their heads. And like I said, it's, it's also all a facade. Like, I put up a post about it just barely. I mean, I laugh. I see people post about their off season. And, man, when people see the results, and these are people I know, and I laugh. I'm like, motherfucker, you haven't strung together a day on your diet yet. Yeah. You're heavier because you're fatter. Right. Like, but but people who are reading it, they're like, yeah, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Right, like, right, right, yeah. That's why I'm a big fan of videos. I don't want to tell you what I'm doing. I'll just show you. There you go. <laughs> a bold and battle-ready focus formula. That takes no prisoners and shows no mercy. What do you got? <laughs> okay. I got a good one here because I, I know what my answer is going to be. While front squatting, the bar always rolls off my shoulders. I have a really hard time with them. I'm six foot two. Do you have any tips? What's your answer? <laughs> uh, well, number one, I, I hate front squats because the opposite reason. They choke me out. Cause, cause I roll it back into, into myself. Um, but, uh, what I have done to defeat that is use straps around the bar and I actually hold the, uh, the, the wrap instead of the bar and I can hold it in position and all I got to worry about is keeping my elbows up. That helps. But but at the end of the day, truthfully for me, front squat is still a nightmare because the only time I get a gasp of air is if I explode out of the hole hard enough that at the top, it literally comes up. And I can t- take a breath. So it's not an issue of it falling off for me. It's just that it chokes me out. Um, so my, my simple answer is the same thing it is when people say, when I'm doing a skull crusher, it hurts my elbow. Well, then just don't do that. Do something else. That's my answer. <laughs> we don't need to do front squats. Yep. There's, there's nothing magic about them. In fact, there's a whole, isn't there a whole bunch of studies that showed the exact same amount of quad recruitment with a back squat and a front squat? Like, body doesn't really do yeah i think if if, what i would say is if you like the way a front squat feels on your structure then do a safety squat i find i sit up the exact same way yeah but yeah front squats man they're just so uncomfortable and there's a point where i I feel like an exercise becomes impractical like like if something if something is you know so difficult to do like you're focusing so much on like not choking yourself which i totally get what right. you mean? That's how it happens to me. I got like six to eight reps and then it's hard to breathe. And, uh, or, you know, like in Ronnie's famous video, the bar, you know, when he did the unbelievable video, 
yeah. the bar popped off his delt at the yeah. end of the sixth rep because the bar kind of was bouncing, right? Yeah. And at the end of rep six, it comes off his delt, so he just drops it on the floor. Yeah. So it's just an impractical exercise. It's if I mean, it's a very athletic exercise, so it's it's useful for all sorts of other people. But if you're a bodybuilder, you don't need to do them. If you yeah. like to do them, that's awesome. I've done them before. I went through a phase where I was trying to get good at front squats, but I realized that it's, I'd rather just focus on something else. Yeah. No, I found that with, when I got strong on them, they hurt my collarbone. Well, <laughs> when not I sitting had on a giant trap anymore, now they're sitting on a piece of my front delt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I had an MRI done in 2009 on my C-spine. Mm -hmm. Well, one of my MRIs. And um, <laughs> she told me she told me not to do anything where the traps like really yank on my neck. Mm -hmm. Like, you know when you do a crab shot? Yeah. You rip your traps up and you feel it get tight. She told me like, don't do that last rep of deadlifts where your traps fall forward and you're pulling on your neck. Right. You know, you know what I mean? I love like, that she knew that. Yeah. She, so she was like a Olympic weightlifter in university. Oh, well, that's awesome. So I was she like, was like, really, knew that shit. she was like pretty aware of stuff. She was a good doctor. And then, uh, and then it was funny because I said to her, I go, Oh, that's funny you say that because front squats always hurt my neck near the end of the set because your shoulders start to pull forward. Yep. You know, you're fighting it. Yep. And she's like, Yeah, I wouldn't do those anymore. <laughs> that's always the simplest answer, though, isn't it? Like, you know, well then don't do that. Yeah. There's, there's, I don't, there's not a single lift that I do or that I've heard other pros that say you must do this, you know, squat, deadlift, whatever, you know what I mean? So valid, valid, um, bum, bum, bum. yes, I got well, a, a good one. It's a good one. Ron mentioned never taking a day off in the gym and Ronnie said he would he wouldn't train for three months. Why? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what it exactly means. I said well, I, think I, he's, I think he's looking at you were obviously your way of making sure you got further in the sport. Right. So was to yeah, train. I Ronnie's way to get further in the sport off. was to rest. Yeah. Yeah. No. Hey, um, I, I, I talk about that all the time. I was, uh, because I was following the Dorian model, because Dorian would say he would do the Olympia, he would take a week off, take a holiday with his family, right? and then he would get back in the gym for the next year. And people would go, oh, when does your off-season start? And he'd be like, in a week. Right. Like, as soon as we're back from our holiday in Spain or whatever. Right. You know? So, mm -hmm. and then he would train all year. And so I used to just do that. I would take like a week off after the show at some point. Mm-hmm. And then I'd take a week off before prep. I'd make myself take a week off all the time. To try just to be like, fresh before just, you prep. Just, yeah, just you're not going to get another rest, man. Right. It's yeah, like, no matter what happens in the next 16 weeks, you're in. Why do they, yeah, I mean, why do you think they make the guys go party before they send them overseas, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know they give the Marines a couple days and then they send them over. Isn't that how it works? Like, <laughs> you know, so it's like, you, you, you know, you're going in. You got to take a little break. Um but yeah, Ronnie with the, the three months off, that was always his, his way of doing things. I mean, fuck, you know, it just comes back to knowing your body. Like there's that famous swimmer that I can't remember his name, but he was like an amazing swimmer, a U.S. swimmer. And right, um, no, it was way before Phelps, like back okay. in the 80s. Was like, <laughs> I was like, you don't know that answer? No, no. Right. He was like, <laughs> he, he was like another, another legendary swimmer. I think he had a mustache even, which is funny because they'd shave everything now. Um, <laughs> But uh, but he was he was famous for like he'd show up to practice with the national team, and he'd be like ah I'm not swimming today, or he just like wouldn't come to practice. But then he'd come the next day and he'd like outperform everybody. Right. And he's like I just know my body. <laughs> That's like uh, you know you you told me to watch the last dance. Yeah. And uh, so I did. And yeah. I thought it was one you didn't obviously you didn't tell me the entire show, but. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool how when when Dennis Rodman took off for basically a week and partied and got fucked up. Isn't that um, great? When they came back, Jordan realized on their first drill that he was fine. He was in shape. He didn't need extra conditioning. If anything, he was better. He's been banging fucking his fucking brains and, out. 
Yeah, and banging on uh, Carmen Electra for the weekend uh, helped him out. You know, so that's one of those things where I see what you mean because even Michael, a guy at his level, realized who expects greatness. Yeah, holy demands fuck, this, it from everyone. This works for him. This is his greatness. Yeah, this is he. If he doesn't step away, he slows down. And I think the other thing is the mental side, right? Like, uh, I think you and I had talked about this. I told Chris one year after show because we had been on a a run. I was like, you know, I think I'm gonna take a month. And Chris and I said, I just think my body and my brain, everything will get a rest. And he's like, cool, you know, whatever. Because I worked with Chris year round back then. And uh, after like 13 days, I I text Chris. I'm like, I'm losing my mind. And he's like, go to the fucking gym. (laughs) He's like. It's not working if it's stressing you out. Yeah, yeah. And it was what, so funny because it was so accurate. I'm like, well, that was a dumb question. <laughs> like, what, what was your, if you just had to think of, uh, so w- when did you watch The Last Dance? I'm still watching it. Oh, you're not done yet. I'm in. I'm just, oh. I just immersed last week. So started. how far in are you? Six episodes. Oh, shit. I, I can't wait. So my favorite moment is in the last episode. Oh, and it's man. like the best fucking quote. I'll, I'll be there by Monday. I'll be there. Uh, Monday. It's the best quote. And I want to talk about it with you. It's just so <laughs> fucking funny. It just sums it. It's, it's the best quote. But so far, what are some of the quotes that you like? You know, what's crazy is actually what um, what I'm enjoying is, number one, the later part I was a part of. I was I'm old enough that like I you lived in second I, three. I lived in Utah when they were beating the Jazz for their last two. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, you know what the crazy thing is, is like I remember when his dad died. I did not realize. I guess I was too young at that point. Um, I didn't realize that they tried to blame it on his gambling. Somehow could have been a reason that his dad was murdered. I'm like, what a fucked up. I, yeah, so I remember right. hearing that story, and I remember, like, you know, when you're young and dumb, and you hear a story, and it like has, it seems like it has credibility. Right. So I actually believed that for a while. I was like, yeah, you know, I was heard it had something to do with his gambling. But what debt could Michael Jack or Michael Jordan not pay? Well, that was what was funny about like, it. That's was, what's ridiculous. I remember that what they put at the show, Come they on. were like, he had Has written he a guy left- a check for fifty-seven thousand for gambling debt, and I'm like, that's like fifty dollars for me. It's nothing. Like you know what I mean? Like like if I owed you a thousand bucks, you'd be like, "Hey, don't forget me, give me that grand." I'm like, "Oh yeah, my bad." That's him on fifty-seven thousand. It's nothing. Like oh yeah, sure. Like people well, don't I, realize that you know he used to bet. He he'd want to bet a couple grand on paper, rock, scissors. Well, did you see? Um, have you got to all the footage of him playing quarters with the guys? Yes. It's, it's he'll bet on anything, man. And yeah, then he's walking bucks. down. Remember he's walking down the hallway and that one like guy that works there walks by and like holds out a 20 bucks and he's like, thanks. And he goes, I love taking their money. Yeah. But if you remember that, that was actually, the, that is the quote that I remember. He said, uh, he said, it doesn't matter how much he goes. Uh, I just like knowing that your money's in my pocket. Yeah. He fucking <laughs> loves to win. So he would play, he'd go and play blackjack on a dollar hands with the guys in the front of the bus sometimes. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, they're, pay, crazy. they're paying a thousand dollars in the back, but he still wants to pop into the front and get a dollar. I I uh, I like the where they go. Is your gambling a problem? And he's like, it's only a problem if you can't afford it. Yeah, when he said he said I don't have a gambling problem, I have a competition problem. A competition problem, yeah. I fucking like because I'm like, I get that. That you know what's yeah. funny is that that truthfully, Ron, is how I stopped gambling. So when I was I don't want to say kid, but when I was younger, I used to love to go to Vegas, and. I would like the rush of a few hundred bucks on a hand. Well, then when I started making more money, I didn't want to put down enough money to feel the rush anymore because it was too too high for me now. Like to get that same feeling that 300 had had to be 3,000 now. And I didn't want to lose $3,000 on a fucking hand of cards. So you were smart enough. So I just said, this isn't fun anymore because for 300, I don't care. And for 3,000, I don't want to lose. Right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you well, see what I'm saying? Like that's that number got point. too high where it's like, well, that wouldn't be fun. Like if I lost when I was younger, the 300 bucks, I was like, ah, that sucks. And if I won, it was exciting. Yeah. I don't want to lose three. Uh, even now, if I lose $3,000 playing cards, somebody beat my ass for being an idiot. Yeah. That's the way my brain functions. It's too high. But like now, if I went down and played for $300, I'm like. Right. 
like I, I don't have a competition problem. That's not that fun to me. I want to go I, do. I'd rather go spend the three hundred bucks on dinner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't you care know. about that stuff. I don't care about gambling. Yeah, so I, I, I feel that. That's good shit. I love that we. So, I totally derailed us there. Sorry. No, no, that's all good. <laughs> they love that shit, Dusty. You know how it works. Like randomly, I'm like, oh, how do we get over here? No. <clears throat> okay, I got one. Go. What's a training, nutrition, or supplementation question you and Dusty disagree on the most? Uh, that's a good question. I'm digging deep here because I'm like, nope, we agree on that. I mean, here's the thing. So training, I don't, we don't disagree, but we train differently during yeah. our career, like totally different. Uh, Ron was fast paced, um, higher volume than me, but still low volume, but I'm mean, way, way faster pace. Like, uh, it's funny, but I was reading, I don't know if you saw, but Jordan, uh, Jordan has challenged me to a, uh, dead stop row competition. We're, we're oh. trying to see who can get to uh, 405 for 20 reps first. Well, I must say on your row video the other day, I can't remember what shirt you had on, but Jesus, fuck, did your back look thick in your shirt. Like your shirt is just swallowing itself in the middle <laughs> on every rep and then stretching like it, it's like you can see all the lumps and you can almost see like. You can see every muscle through see your shirt, through the t-shirts, and then you pull it up, and it just mashes together. And it looks like you're, it looks like you have so much muscle that your shoulder blades hit each other, and like stop <laughs> moving. Jam, I can't they go jam. further. They're actually touching. Yeah, no, that so, 405, uh, you were just smoking it. It look, it, you fucking looks like it's working. So I loved it though. So, so he, I literally, I'm on the treadmill this morning. It's four in the morning, and I, the first video that pops up is is Jordan doing, doing dead stop. So I'm watching. I don't even, I don't read it. I'm watching. I was like, "Ooh, he got 14," and they were and they were they were clean. I mean, Jordan's a fucking beast. And uh, then I real I scrolled down and, and he he tagged me in it. And I'm like, "Oh, I got to read this." So I read it and he says, uh, "It said something about uh, I had to know if I could do the same reps, but now I think we should have a race to 20. What do you think?" And I'm like, "Well, yeah, <laughs> I love this idea." But what a guy said, point to this question is. Uh, Someone asked him, how long do you rest before a set? And his answer is the exact same as mine is, which is, I don't do my set until I'm 100% fresh. Right. Like, I could be five minutes. I don't care. Because I'm only going to do a couple sets anyways. You know what I mean? Like, I bet you a, a, a workout, like a back workout, particularly, which is my lowest volume day by far, I bet I'm actually – doing working sets now this is an argument because some people consider warm-ups working but the ones i consider working sets i'm probably training for six minutes totally yeah you know and i'm there for an hour yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know but there, uh, so there, I, I, I like to refer to i like to refer to those types of sets and i i know what you mean like i did real dorian training for a long time like four right. sets of chest right right so i did that I did that for years, but those are violent events. <laughs> I got to get a shirt. <laughs> Warning, violent events. Yes. It, it's, it's some the, some like MMA guy's going to whip my ass yeah. and he thinks I'm trying to be tough. That's not what I was talking about. No, my, my, my training evolved as I got older and I, and I started either having problems or foreseeing problems with moving certain poundages. And then now my training is the way it is just because I'm retired. That's just right. I just yeah, I remember though when we, the we safest, did that, hardest, smartest way I can train. When we did a, I did a workout with Ron, and I think he multiplied the rest time by three, and I was still dying. <laughs> I was like, fuck, this sucks. Why well, <laughs> still have like me and, you still know, rep me and outplayed me on everything? So there you go. So, so what, what is? Can you think of something that we actually don't agree on though? The the thing is, is I'm I'm not a disagreeable person. Like, I don't like um. I don't like extremes and I don't like absolutes. Me neither. I don't do absolutes. You know, so like the whole, oh, that doesn't work or that never works or that's, that's stupid. Or I, I'm just like, I don't really, I don't argue with people about that bullshit, it, namely because I don't give a fuck what they think. Right. <laughs> well, it is, I, I agree people, with that. People could come up to me all the time and they're like, yeah, man, I'm on this all organic, no carb, all polysaturated fat um only fish diet 
and I just go, ah, oh, fuck, awesome, good luck. Like, yeah. I don't, like, you know, I just, I don't care. Yeah. And I don't, and I, I don't mean that in that I don't want to have conversations about nutrition. I just, I don't try to argue with people. You don't try to convince them that I there's don't try a better to convince way. When there's a better way, I don't. I don't go. Oh, well, it sounds like an interesting diet. Do you ever throw any red meat in? Like, I don't try to suggest red. Like, I don't. It's not my place. It's his diet. Like, right. Like, I don't. I don't feel like I need to change anyone's opinion. I don't care if people agree with me or not. Well, I think also is if somebody asks you, because if I were yeah, that, like, I think I think that's the reason I have a hard time of thinking is the majority of the things you've never said something we've been talking about bodybuilding where i've been like no no you know what i mean there's, and then there's and there's a so, lot of things that you say where i'm like yes like even basic things like cycles like i think the greatest cycle in the world is is test and eq that's it right i'm in heaven and i remember it one fits. time you were like oh i love test and eq and i'm like me too <laughs> so so i don't think of anything we disagree on there's some stuff that i've heard you say where i'm like oh that's interesting i never thought that Right. I'm not going to argue with him because he may, he's probably, yeah, I could see why he's doing that. That makes sense. Right. But like, I remember you, you, you like to take HCG with your cruises. Right. Or you were suggesting, and I was like, take it all time. right, take it all time. And I guess if you want to keep, you know, swimmers and all that stuff. Yeah, right. I guess, but never crossed my mind. Yeah. I don't do that, but I'm not saying you're wrong. Yeah. You know? I- <laughs> Cause I want to be able to blast loads all the time, buddy. <laughs> Emily hasn't killed you yet, but it's fucking coming. No, I'm kidding. I don't take those risks. My pull, my pull-out game is strong. <laughs> she buys far too many sneakers to just be fucking. <laughs> There's a lot of sneakers. A lot of sneakers. Watch previous episodes if you want to know what that means. Oh, come on. Okay. <sighs> my dirtiest joke of the day. I feel like that was uncalled for. Was that uncalled for? No. Fucking no. Uh, okay, already yeah, that was one I needed. Okay. Um, we're going we're going deep here. I had oh, like oh. three deep ones in a row, and I was trying to avoid them, and I have no choice now. I'm gonna go to the I got a real deep, deep one. one. I got a real deep one. I don't know if we can even go this deep. I have to save it and talk about whether we can ask it. Well, fuck now. I want yours. No, no. Okay, you go. God damn it! Now you got me interested. Dick. No, no. Okay, where do you where do you see yourself in five years, ideally? Oh, okay. Well, um. You know, me and the boys have some plans for the business. Um, we just signed a new five-year lease. Hey. So, so um, our, our three-year lease will end in October, and our new five-year lease will start. So mm-hmm. we'll have our three-year anniversary this October, and we'll be on a new five. Um, so there's a plan about where we want to have the gym at the end of that five-year lease. Right. Right, because that's the next, obviously, big next level of commitment at that point. Right. Um, so we have there's a there's plans for the gym um, that we all think are awesome. Um, uh, we love living here. I don't think we're going to move anytime soon. The location's just too ridiculous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, I, like, I agree because I actually know exactly where he lives. Yeah. The, the only way we'd move is if we actually decided we needed a yard. And we'd have to go about 20 minutes out to be able to like shift the value of this condo into something that had some type of small yard. Right. Um, that's so, different there. That would, that'd be hard to sacrifice, especially since you own the restaurant across the street. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, so, so, um, we'll probably won't move, probably stay here. Um, I got plans for, I actually got plans for this room partially because of the podcast, you know, go nice. to can dress this room up. And uh, do some cool shit to it. And uh, I don't know. Emily and I are doing awesome. We're happy. We're thinking about a second dog. I like that as plan. Jedi 7. So we think it might be good to give him a buddy. You know, as he gets older, there'll be a buddy there. Right. That'd be a good idea. So we're thinking of adding a second dog. And um, I'm going to be getting a new vehicle very soon. <sighs> I'm so, I think, you know, you notice I didn't even ask what you're looking at. Well, not. But yeah, so um, I felt by your question that you didn't really know. So. Oh, no, I, I, it's, I was I actually I didn't say what I wanted because I, I, I thought that you might just assume. And? Oh, no, I fucking love Grand Cherokees. I want so to stick new, to one. Yeah, I mean, I've had three Jeeps. Right. They've been unbelievable. I tried to find something else. 
<laughs> like I looked, I looked, I looked at all. I know I want an SUV. Right. I know I don't want it to be bigger than a Grand Cherokee. Like Grand Cherokee's maximum size that I would want. Right. And then I don't want it smaller. Like it literally is exactly what I want. I kept trying to look for th- other things. Right. But I'd look, <laughs> I'd find something and I'd be like, fuck, this is pretty nice. And then I'm like, ah, fuck, Emily's going to be six inches closer to me. It's too close. She's already very, that very, space. yeah. What about those she's road clean. trips? Yeah. What about when we're on the highway? She's going to be right next to be like her. Yeah, too much. Not even room for roadhead. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But <laughs> I don't need seats for 10, you know? <laughs> Right, like that. <laughs> I love that they do that. When I had that X5, the guy's like, "It's got the third row seats." I'm like, "Was well, there a way to get rid of those? Because you're charging me for them, and I don't." You just hollow out the back. I don't actually even right? need the back seat, if I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just put a bed back <laughs> I, I don't there. travel with anyone. <laughs> um, yeah. So I tried. You know, I I looked at lots of other stuff, and then the other stuff that was sort of the the way I would want it to look and be like size wise inside and and it was like now i'm getting into like even more expensive stuff right like i'm like well what else do i like besides the grand cherokees and i'm like oh well i like the i like the lexuses right <laughs> and i'm like well yeah i'm not spending that i'm like i'm just not that type of guy i'm just not spending that right. so i'm like yeah so i i just i'm gonna get another jeep fucking jeep number four what color well, it depends on which one I s- settle on. I, I like white and I like black. I'm right. not sure. I have I have a silver one right now, so I'm going to avoid silver because I want to change. Right. But I do like that matte gray they have on some of the new ones. Oh, it's nice. You, you know what I mean? Remember, it's always raining where you live. Your car will be very dirty if you buy black. You are correct. White cars will be dirty that they don't really look that dirty. Right, I know what you mean. The the I think the gray will pull it off as well. You know, yeah. It's weird because I I love black cars and uh, I've owned a few, but uh, I still now I end up buying white and silver. I think cars should only be made in three colors: black, white, and silver. Um, <laughs> it's just me, but <laughs> but all right, good. I got the info. Sorry for everyone who doesn't give a fuck about Ron's car, but this is yeah, a big yeah. deal. Ron doesn't buy cars. I oh. thought I would be dead before Ron bought anything other than his Cherokee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. And then, you know, I also tempted to, like, just buy, like, a 2015 and just pay cash for it. Right. <laughs> That's the thing, though, with those is they Lost do so off. well, you're kind of like, oh, there we go. Done. <laughs> like, I could just, like, do I need a 2019? Do I need a 2020? Like, I don't, like, I'm not that convinced. So I still have the odd day. Like, I went and test drove a few the other day. And honestly, I was just so happy with the stereo. Because it had like a good stereo in it. I'm like, fuck, I just, you know what I mean? Like, I don't need all the features. I'm surprised that you want a good stereo because I thought my, my old hockey coach used to listen to like all the old rock and roll stuff and he'd play it in our bus so loud and the speakers kind of sucked and it was all distorted. And I'm like, dude, the speakers, it sounds terrible. Goes, it sounded like it did in the 70s. Oh, yeah, yeah, the vintage sound. <laughs> like, he's like, that's how it really was. And I'm like, it was shitty, but now we have good speakers. That's like okay. playing 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 the original Nintendo on an old TV. Yeah, I, thought, I felt like I was gonna like I'd ruin it for him if I put it in some quality sound. All did, right, did, all right. Did, I gotta throw this in. I gotta bring it up because I I was uh, I was trying to win something, but I saw this post. Did you see my ACDC post? I I didn't even see it. I just saw you tagged me in something, but it was on a weekend. Or no, it was Friday. Yeah, no, I put up so I put up an ACDC post because it was a 40th anniversary of Back in Black. Okay. And um, there's a contest. There's like the ACDC official newsletter. There's a contest to win like a guitar and a fucking huge amp and all this like awesome shit. Right. But you had to do a post and you had to put back in black 40. So that's why I put that up is to try to win, try to win this fucking rake. So I'm rubbing my hands. I think you're going to win. I hope. If you win, you have to buy a 2020. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's dusty logic 101 right there okay okay this is good this is good this is good if i want to be a pro should i blast and cruise or do pct after the cycle which i guess means come off what's the difference thanks well i mean i came off for like a long time i used to come off 
after I used to cycle and come off all the time. That's how we did it all through the nineties, you know, well into the two thousands, the whole Mm -hmm. cruise thing didn't start till after that. So, you know, most of the bodybuilders before then, that's what they did. Yeah. Um, you know, except for obviously some guys were, you know, secretly staying on and all that stuff, you know, it's like, it it worked (laughs) its way down. Yeah. It worked its way down. I think um, that's the, the, what you just said though, is, is the, is what truly happened is we found that coming off is harder for your body to get back. Yeah. You, unless you're going to come off and stay off for a year, you're not really going to fully recover anyways. Yeah. So the issue is truly that you're going to lose some gains doing it that way. The word is futile. Valid. <clears throat> futile effort. <clears throat> so, um, so then it just becomes, you know, now we're on the, everything creeps, right? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The problem is, is cruising is cruising, which means 150 milligrams, 200 milligrams max. I see guys are like, yeah, I'm cruising. I'm like, oh, yeah. And then, and I don't even ask because I know what that means. They're like, yeah, just 500 milligrams of cipronate. I'm like, you're on. Yeah, you're super physiological, like times 10. Yeah, like so, so <laughs> don't lose track of that because I, I feel like that's what's really happened is the word cruise has become an excuse to really not come off, but maybe yeah. just pull out the EQ and the this, that, and the other and stay on a high dose of test. Yeah. You know, so so don't yeah. get confused on what cruise means. No, no, I don't even use the word cruise because I'm, I'm, I use 300 milligrams a week. So I actually don't use the word cruise. Well, for you, 300 milligrams a week is now what you do. So that's your that's your everything. Yeah, but well, I guess on my body weight, it'd be interesting. I'll see where I'll see where my test level is on my next blood work. Who knows? I think you're gonna be surprised. Okay, I do. Um, you can go because we don't need to beat that one up anymore. You have a question? You had a really tough oh. question. I went two in a row. Did you? Yeah. Whoops. My bad. Oh damn. Selfish fuck. That's funny. Okay. Let me see. I lost my screen. Boom. Ah. Choose a buddy cop movie that both of you would want to play the characters in. Example, Men in Black. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, God. <laughs> buddy cop movie. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. Well, I mean, shit. <laughs> what, what is... Uh, all right, this, this is terrible because this, this would be my actual truth in my fucked up life. Um, what Rush Hour. <laughs> Rush <out. laughs> I'm Chris Tucker. <laughs> We'd have to, I'd have to learn some martial arts then, I think. i got to learn some moves if you're Chris Tucker. I'm Shit. like, that's it. <laughs> that, that would be me approaching these situations, just a complete fucking mess. That's funny. I was thinking the other guys. <laughs> <laughs> Will you're Ferrell and Mark there. Wahlberg, right? it back. <laughs> Now that would actually makes even better sense. <laughs> hey, have you have you done a desk pop yet? <laughs> what a desk pop! You know, fire your gun off at your desk. Someone's done a desk pop. <laughs> oh my god, I haven't seen that in so long. Rob Riggle is so funny. Holy shit! Desk that's... pop. <laughs> he said, "This is you're gonna this. You've done this to me now multiple times. Like I've got like a, a list of shit I have to watch." Right. <laughs> because of this freaking show. The best. Oh, it's God. Best. Okay, let's see. I'm, we got a couple more because we're, we're almost to our mark where I'm getting people through three sessions of cardio right here. Damn. Damn. Oh, here we go. How important are per- post-workout carbs for someone trying to lose fat? Do the benefits outweigh the extra calories? Uh, well, I would have carbs post-workout to replenish glycogen Mm -hmm. um so it's all about how many carbs you're having and i tend to spread my carbs evenly out throughout the day because i like to keep my blood sugar levels really steady Mm -hmm. and then as carbs get reduced i sort of keep them around the workout for performance reasons but i do try to spread them out like if i have 400 carbs a day i don't put them all around the workout and then have no carbs rest of the day Right, because I, I like to even them out, make my meals all nice and even, and just have my blood sugar nice and steady through the day. So if you have carbs in your diet, I would put some of them post workout. Yeah. You know, maybe you have carbs at four of your meals, 
And so put the equal amount of carbs at each meal. Just keep it simple. Just try that. Yeah, I was going to say the, the part of the question that threw me off was the extra calories. It doesn't have yeah. to be extra. Like, yeah, that's just part you of You get diet. a certain amount of cal- of carbs in your day, yeah. put some on post workout. And I think the other thing that's gotten abused is everyone thinks they need such an asinine amount of carbs to yeah. replenish glycogen. It's I had this conversation just barely with one of my clients who uh, uh, she felt a little hypo during her workout. Yeah, so she had 100 grams of carbs. So she went off the Richter. And I'm like, yeah. you sound like you were hungry, not hypo. Yeah. It was like, you need like 10 grams of carbs. Yeah, diabetic will have like a five gram candy. Yeah, no, I used to, I actually, uh, when I first was tinkering with insulin, I bought those little chews and they say that like one of those hits your body kind of like a pack of lifesavers. Right. So I just kept them around. I think I only had one once because I How never many milligrams of, or how many grams of carbs were in them? Like two. Yeah. Like it's like nothing. Grams. Yeah, it's two or yeah. four. It's it's. I remember reading them and being like, "Is this right?" Like I was nervous when I was a kid. I was like, "Ah, oh, fuck it, I got the whole pack if I need them." <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah so that's <laughs> that, that's the trick. Is everyone thinks they need more? I mean, if it's I have I have fifty contest, grams of carbs. I yeah. have fifty grams of carbs in my shake post workout. I have time where fifty grams of carbs is my entire day. Oh yeah. So when that takes place, uh, oftentimes I have none because I like the carbs. I like to feel satiated when I train. Yeah, I'd have I if they're really low, I have them before I train. Yeah, I'm like I want to I want to yeah. eat before I go to the gym. And, I'm and okay also feeling too, like shit after. You know, uh, like as long as you have you know protein, so you have leucine triggering muscle synthesis, protein synthesis post workout, you can kickstart the recovery process. You're just not going to be loading as much glycogen, mm-hmm. but you but it's but you don't need carbs to. St- to start to recover it's just faster if you do that yeah, yeah exactly. you know so you'll still recover from your workout as long as you're having enough you know calories to sustain your muscle yep yeah i tell my clients that all the time when I, when I send them the diets i'm a weird i'm not really concerned with when you eat your food so i'm like i wrote these as one through six but i don't care if you want to eat makes meal six for meal one that's fine yeah <laughs> yeah <Even laughs> you know simple eat everything that's on this day and nothing additional and we'll be fine Mm-hmm. Eat what's on the paper. <laughs> That's it. It's all you get. What else you got? Damn. I'm You're saving avoid- that one question. You're not You're gonna avoid it before I can ask. It's it. that deep. Ooh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I freaking love it. Here's oh, one. Go ahead. Um. Biggest thing you learned from coaching others that you have turned around and applied to yourself? Hmm. Okay. Uh, mine is, I didn't apply it to myself, but I've applied it to my life, um, which is I don't tend to talk about things um, unless I need to change them. Meaning, like, if things are good, I'll just say, okay, pick some three days. Right. Like look better picks in three days. Um, and I learned actually what's funny is I, I learned this through my uh, massage therapist that I had for years. Uh, one time she just asked me, she goes, do you like getting massages from me? And I was like, well, yeah. Oh, you just, you never say that like it's, it was great. And I'm like, well, I've been coming to you for three years every week. Like, so in my brain, that, is it right? You know what I mean? So, so since that I've actually learned and I, and I try, I act, I have to actively try to tell people what I'm seeing because I'll see changes and I just right. roll. So now I make sure with my client updates, it's like, you know, Oh, by the way, it's been a few weeks. Here's exactly what I've seen going on with your physique. And I found like, man, that was a big hole in my, in my, in my abilities. Cause people are like, Oh, that's great to know. I, I didn't know what you were looking at. Right. And I'm right. like, fuck, I'm glad I learned. Now I learned that years ago now, but it's like in yeah. hindsight, had I never gotten that, I just, if I, if I, if nothing's wrong, I didn't say anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do you got? Um, interesting. One thing that coaching's taught me is that well, like you're saying, you know, have you, 
you heard of like that sort of reminded me. Have you heard of that book? Like the I think it's the five languages of love or whatever. Yeah. You heard about that stuff? Yeah. Yep. So it's it's kind of interesting. But anyways, it's like, you know, some people do things for people. Some people say they appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Some people like, you know, some relationships, it's like hugs and kisses. Some things, it's like I can't remember what they are. Yeah. I mean, I know what I mean. But everyone has ways that they communicate. And, yeah. you know, you 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 show loyalty to people. Right. And that like is your way of like saying, hey, yeah, I'm on your side. Like you're my guy. Right. But some people need to hear it. Yeah, you have to actually say you're and good. <laughs> their brain actually has to hear someone go, you know what? You're really good at this. So sometimes we run in and that's part of why people have conflict and part of why some people don't click and part of why some people have why, why people have misunderstandings. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of funny. But when you become self-aware of the ways that you're not good at communicating, <laughs> There's a lot of ways for me to go ahead. <laughs> right. And it helps you out. Right. But when you coach people you 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 learn a little bit because you're dealing with just all these different personality types. Right. And even though I tend to attract like super hardcore clientele that want to train hard and stuff, there's still a large variety of personality types. Right. Yeah. They're not all they're not all, you know, messed up like you. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Which I always think is the easiest people like to, to function with because you're like I look back and I had some really good coaches when I played sports and they knew to piss me off. Right. Yeah. They figured and it out. Yeah. And then, and, and then, but they would do it in a way that I didn't always realize they were doing it on purpose. Right. If I knew it didn't work. Right. right. You know what I mean? And it's funny because other people, you'll break them. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and, and they'll just form. fall apart if you don't, you know what I mean? If you don't coddle them. So you're right. It's, it definitely, you learn to pay attention to what people need to, to, uh, to get the, bu- the best out of them. You know what I mean? It's probably yeah, yeah. what makes great coaches great. Yeah. You mean, you got it. You got it. You got to communicate. You got to be, you got to be pretty empathetic to a degree too, because people are going through like, you know, when they're all low carbed and stressed out. And then plus half the time, you know, they're not telling you, but they're fighting with their fucking husband the whole time or whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so you just got to try to just like, you know, stay calm, be calm for them. Right. When they come, when they come to you with their updates and stuff, the last thing they need is more stress back, you know? Right. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. You just got to learn to kind of see when that's happening, but it's, it's, it's interesting and it's a skill, you know, and it helps out in life, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, that, like you said, I think it's the awareness. Because once you realize, you're like, man, I, I, I joke, I'm like, for somebody who's known to have some depth, I'm also hollow as fuck in other areas. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, well, just fucking do it right. I walk away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was the conversation. So um, I got to say, um, actually, I got to do one more final check. I might be able to announce it. One more final check. Uh, it would be nice if you could announce this. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'll I'll announce it on on IG. I'll announce it on IG. I'm waiting yeah. for one more text. We're uh, we're hoping for uh, a guest next week for our fiftieth episode. It's kind of fifty, dude. Fifty. We're almost at a year. Almost at a year. We don't know whether we should celebrate the fifty or just wait for fifty-two. I like fifty because like everybody 50. fifty. Yeah. yeah. Plus, I mean, the way we're going, I don't know if everyone's still going to watch at 52 if 50 doesn't go perfect. We need well, 50 to make sure we get to 52. You know, speaking <laughs> of 50, I got to say happy birthday to somebody. My longtime friend, John Davey in Australia. Everyone in Australia knows John Davey. 50 years old. So I'm sending a shout out to him. You know, I actually just saw that. It was, he put up a picture with him and his daughter. I started following him. I don't even know how I bumped into him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I but I remember uh, this is so fucked up though, dude. The first Olympia I went to, he he, that was the Olympia he did. Oh, that was great. That the, yeah, he found out that his wife was pregnant with his daughter. Yeah, who's now a, an adult, which makes me fucking old. And I just remember like I'm thinking because he puts the pictures up like when I first started following, I'm like, oh, who's this this daughter? And I started doing the math that he only has one daughter. Yeah, I'm thinking about yeah. the years. I'm like, 
son of a bitch, that kid wasn't born when he did the, or, or was just barely born when he yeah. did the Olympia. <laughs> so at the Olympia, at the Olympia, what he had at the Olympia was he had the baby and he had a pregnant wife. That's freaking crazy. At the Olympia. And it was funny because all the other guys at the Olympia just had their like, all, you know, all their buddies around them. Yep. Right. Their entourages. Right. Like, you know, just the, maybe the wife and then the crew, you know, or whatever. Right, yeah. And John had his like wife and the stroller. <laughs> and it was funny because I, I remember I remember thinking at that show, like John was a great bodybuilder. I remember thinking at that show, you know, because he was doing well for himself. I mean, he owns all those world gyms now. Yeah. I remember thinking like, fuck, he's lucky. He doesn't have to be here. Yeah, this is truly passion. He's, the, he's like the only guy at this show that doesn't have to be here. He's here because he right. wants it's his hobby. Right. He's at the Olympia. <laughs> this takes him away from the shit that really makes him money. <laughs> yeah. Like he spent five grand to be here. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And like you look, look down the row and like, you know how it was in those days. Like guys were fucking, you know, living in cardboard boxes to train for the O and like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't so think I thought that was realized cool. the, uh, the disparity bodybuilding is like, is like boxing. 5% of the people make 95% of the money. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's so, not even always the winners either. Oh fuck no! Like, or the no. guys that have long careers. Sometimes you just it's just the way the numbers work out. Yeah, so it's funny because people, I get that all the time. Like, oh, how do I, you know, how do I get a career making good money in bodybuilding? I'm like, well, there's a lot of ways, but there's also a hell of a lot of ways to go broke doing this. So yeah, <laughs> find find your niche or or get the fuck out soon. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or at least remember it's just a hobby and have fun. You know what I mean? <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's, that's how it's That's crazy. But yeah, I, I did blow my away when I first started following him. I'm like, did the math. I'm like, oh, 03, 18. Shit, that's her. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel like I'm getting old too, man. There's some funny stuff. I really got my brother yesterday. My brother came by to see the gym. Right. Hasn't seen it yet. <laughs> Almost three years. <laughs> well, he's, he's a busy guy. He's a doctor. He's busy. He's but he fancy. comes by. He, he's fancy. He comes by and I think, I don't think he realized what it was. Like, I don't think he, he walked in. He was like, uh, like, he thought oh. it was like a basement gym. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what he thought it was that, you know, and it was just, it was, it was awesome anyways. So, um, because him and I sometimes talk about music, right? I mentioned, I said, cause I was actually blasting back in black when he walked of in. Of course, the timing. <laughs> and I go, Hey, look, I'm, I'm playing back in black cause it's 40 year anniversary. And he goes, what? <laughs> and I go, it's 40 year anniversary back in black. He goes, oh my God, I was in grade 12. I went to that concert. That was 40 fucking years ago. Like, <laughs> you ruined his life. You ruined did. it. He's like, oh. <laughs> He's just Don't like, you love how you, we all know how old we are, but something is still like a gut punch when it happens. You're like, occasionally, occasionally. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> you know? I had that I had that recently. Dante's uh, Dante's daughter is texting me about the uh, about the dogs. Right. But she's texting in perfect English with punctuation. And I remember that in 2008, when I won my first overall, Diane, his wife, was pregnant with her. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> now, now she knows who I like, knows everything, knows the dogs is operating a phone i'm like oh god no 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 <laughs> you're a baby and i'm still young <laughs> i know i know well we'll 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 uh we'll, we'll um we'll stay focused on uh trying to remain youthful you keep getting botox in your face yes lying i'll to myself. keep i'll keep having a 30 minute nap every afternoon doing what i got to do to hold myself together love it you're gonna love the gym next time you come up if you're ever allowed to cross the border well, I haven't been allowed for a long time, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> okay. Anything before we go? No, I'm just I'm I'm everyone keep an eye on Ron's page for the big announcement because I I want this to happen. So I'm we're pretending I'm willing this right now. Oh God, I won't post my vehicle on Instagram. Not that one. Not that one. The second dog, silly. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, that's not happening this week. I'm going to try to make the other one happen this week, though. There you go. Okay, thanks. Remember, everybody, it's just bodybuilding. <laughs>